hallelujah. I want to give Pastor Joaquin as much time as he needs to minister the gospel tonight. So here, without any further ado, Pastor Joaquin from San Diego, or well, from Tucson, previously San Diego, previously Brazil. <laughs> to be in the house of the Lord with you this wonderful evening. Amen. I'm glad you're here tonight. Amen. You know why? Because if you weren't here, you wouldn't be here. Amen. Oh, that's deep, huh? We're going to go deep tonight. Amen? Amen? Praise God. No, but it's wonderful to see you all. It's great to see the trio. Hey, you know who you are, sister. Amen? The trio, amen, still throwing it down on the worship team. Amen. amen. Praise God. Let's give them a round of applause. Amen. Praise God. That's, I tell you what, it's, it, it's not easy to, to, to do this. Amen. Week after week, month after month, year after year. That's not, that's not easy. But you know what? It's worth it, isn't it? Amen. Because they bring such a joy and an anointing and they make pastor. Amen. It just looks so good. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I thought you were say amen a little louder, Pastor Corey. <laughs> me, and Cor me and Pastor Corey have been having a great time since I've been here. Um, he is a trip. Amen? <laughs> He's a trip. And uh, wow, just to know that God can take a blasphemer and convert him into not only a saved person on his way to heaven, but use him the way that God is using him. And I, he was telling me some stuff about his past. I said, I didn't know that. And uh, he said, yeah, I don't share that with everybody. So I won't share it with you. You can ask him. Amen. So uh, tonight, before I get into the word of God, with your permission, I'd like to do a song. Is that okay? Yes. Yeah. And so uh, this evening, uh, maybe some of you remember this song. I don't know, Joel uh, recorded it. Uh, last year, two year, almost two years ago, huh? a year and a half ago almost, um, but uh, this one is entitled, um, If It Wasn't For Jesus, If It Wasn't For Jesus. <clears throat> Go ahead. I'll prepare for the days like it was yesterday. If it wasn't for Jesus, would it be here today? Time, places, things I shouldn't have done. My whole life's a miracle. From you, I couldn't run. I remember the days like it was yesterday. If it wasn't for Jesus, would it be here today? Time, places, things I shouldn't have done. My whole life's a miracle. From you, I couldn't run. I tried to run when I was young, but to no avail. If it wasn't for Jesus, could have been in hell. Like that time I got black with facts. Thank you, Jesus, that my head was the only thing that cracked. As I'm praying in the dark, it's still of my skin, I'm holding the rail of the hospital bed. Please forgive me, Lord, for what I'm about to do to these two little fools. I know it isn't cool to pray that way to you, but I'm stuck in the fix. Shouldn't have messed with that trick, and I'm sick in the head. And I'm sure not gonna rat. Cops are trying hard to get me to speak like I'm on some tweet, but I'm not that informant of the week. That he spoke out a plan. We'll run through the house with the gat as the other post up in the back. But it's not supposed to go down like this. So that plan I had to diss, thinking of the what ifs. Like what if bombs is in the pad? And what if I do this thing that ends up bad? And what if when I'm in the pen, when the relative takes me out? And what if when I'm in the pen, they run up in my house? I remember the days like it was yesterday. If it wasn't for Jesus, would it be here today? Time, places, things I should have done. My whole life's a miracle. From you, I couldn't run. I remember the days like it was yesterday. If it wasn't for Jesus, would it be here today? Time, places, things I should have done. My whole life's a miracle. From you, I couldn't run. On a mission to do another beer run. But this time, but why does a dude decides 
to leave his truck, he socks the window, thinking Jesus, all I gave him was the bird, cause under my seat was a loaded 22 pistol, and to be honest, that I was on some crystal, now speaking of crystal, she always let me down, like that one day when I was on the come down, went outside, decided to push my weight around, now this dude's on the ground, so talking crazy, so I chase him in the parking complex, next thing you know, I throw his head through a window, but that's the life of sin, though. Now the fire's kindled, and even though that dude didn't rat that cat, I seen again. Looking super thin with his jaw wired from within. He began to confess that his brother wanted to smoke me. No joke, G, but he said he didn't do it because he didn't know who I knew. I guess that makes two. But in reality, Lord, it was really you. It was really you. I remember the days like it was yesterday. Now I will for the days like it was yesterday. If it wasn't for Jesus, would it be here today? Time, places, and things I shouldn't have done. My whole life's a miracle. From you, I couldn't run. I remember the days like it was yesterday. If it wasn't for Jesus, would it be here today? Time, places, and things I shouldn't have done. My whole life's a miracle. From you, I couldn't run. Do you remember the days like it was yesterday? If it wasn't for Jesus, would you be here today? Time, places, things you shouldn't have done. Is your life a miracle, or are you on the run? Do you remember the days like it was? yesterday. If it wasn't for Jesus, would you be here today? Time, places, things you shouldn't have done. Is your life a miracle or are you on the run? Thank you, Jesus. I was able to get that all out. Cheers. Oh, man. God is good. God is good. And so some of you youngsters, right, you got you got talent, and God's put that, something on your heart, you need to do something. And if this old dude can do it, what can you do? Amen? Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. God is good. Amen. And so tonight I want to minister a message entitled, The Pain of Rejection for You. The Pain of Rejection for You. Isaiah 53 Three is going to be our text tonight. And say amen when you have it. All right, click on the draw. Isaiah 53, 3. And the Bible tells us this. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as if it were our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Let me start off by saying that every negative thing that Jesus went through was for your good. Think with me about Jesus dying on the cross. He felt the weight of the cross as a man. He became a man. He walked in our shoes. And he experienced what you and I did not deserve. He experienced what you and I deserved, but he did not deserve. Think with me about Jesus tonight. Death is closing in and he says these words, My God, my God, why have you? forsaken me. Think about that tonight. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I heard a story a while back of a notorious criminal gang member by the name of Kilroy, Roy Ball Kilroy. Maybe some of you heard his story. He was a former Mexican Mafia member. And it was a very intriguing story, his testimony being that he was a former uh, Mexican Mafia member and radically got saved. But I've heard these stories before, and what hit me the hardest was when he spoke about his childhood. And what drove him to the streets and eventually to prison and eventually to become a member of the Mexican Mafia. 
And the thing that caught my attention the most was when he talked about his childhood and how he would be dropped off at his grandmother who raised him in Los Angeles and he was such an unruly child that she would tie him up with ropes and he would break the ropes and he would run out into the street and run him up again and they would get him and bring him back and tie him up with ropes and he would break the ropes again. She said it was so bad that one time they tied him up with chains. And in his testimony, he talked about children's relationship with the parents and he said, when you have kids, you know, they need to know that you're their friend. Here's an 80-year-old man practically and he's talking about his childhood. Still remembering all the things that happened when he was a kid and how it all started. This man was a shot caller. This was not a guy that you wanted to double cross, if you would, if you, if you will. But what drove him to the streets was rejection from his home. See, rejection can cause a person to go on a never-ending road in search of acceptance. Like many of you, I'm sure tonight, I was raised in a broken home. I craved acceptance from other people. Any friend that got close to me, I got close to them. They were always, you know, I had, a, I had a few friends always at my house, hanging out with them, going to their house, because I, I wasn't raised with brothers and sisters. I, I, I have a brother and sister, but I wasn't raised with them. They're older than me. I remember one time I, I, I became blood brothers with, the, with the, a, a friend of mine. He was from L.A., came down, moved to San Diego, and uh, we became friends in sixth grade, and we just hit it off, and he was from a broken home, I was from a broken home, his dad was a drug dealer, and, uh, and, and my dad was a heroin addict who was in prison, his dad was in prison, and so we didn't know all, you know, put the connection together, we are little kids, we just knew that we liked hanging around each other, he was a clipto, he, he would go and into the malls and come out, you know, just with all kinds of stuff. He was burning, you know, people in the neighborhood. And, and, and he was just hurt. He was broken, just like me. And I remember becoming blood brothers with him. And I still have the little scar on my hand. And we had the little, uh, you know, uh, exacto knife or whatever, or knife. I don't remember how exactly he did it. You know, we were high on cocaine at 14 years old and cutting in our skin. and putting, you know, our blood together. How I many know you shouldn't be doing cocaine at 14 years old? But um, nobody should be doing cocaine, right? And if you're on cocaine tonight, we're going to pray for you to be free. Amen. If you're on cocaine, as a matter of fact, tonight, or you're on crack or crystal or whatever, opioids or freakazoids or whatever you want to call it, uh, you're in a good place tonight. Amen. Don't leave before the service is over. But you want a word from the Lord, there you go. Amen. That's a word from the Lord. You see, I needed my father in my life. But my mother didn't want him around because he was a bad influence. Can I get one witness tonight? Yet she was an alcoholic who still wanted to party, right? I don't want you around because you stick needles in your arm. But I'm okay because I only do speed and drink, right? That don't make no sense, right? At least when you grow up, you start to wonder why. When some of you remember the sermon that I preached last time I was here, Dad, where were you? You see, rejection will take you places that you necessarily don't anticipate going. Some people when they suffer from rejection, will go to extremes to feel accepted. And how many know tonight that things are not always what they seem? Take, for example, women who dress provocatively or who are downright lustful. 
You know, you can look at them from the outside after you've been cleaned up for a while, huh? Come on, somebody. After you've been redeemed and sanctified and not in that life for a while, and, and you can look at someone like that and you go, oh, how could she? How in the world? I can't believe that. How appalling. But how many know that many times a, a person like that has suffered rejection growing up and still trying to fill the emptiness that's inside of their hearts. One day my son Joshua was playing uh, soccer in Brazil when we were missionaries. And I'm sitting on the bleachers, he's in the dirt, uh, playing with some of the older, older, older kids. And next to me is a young girl by the name of Bianca. Bianca used to come to our English class and sometimes our services. And uh, her and her cousins would hang out with my, my, my son Joshua. And, and he would hang out with their cousins and, and brother. They play uh, papagayo, that's a uh, um, kites. And they put this thing on there called chilena. And chilena basically is this... Uh, fiberglass type of uh, thing that they would coat the strings with. So, got to be careful with those because like if they fall, like, they can do some damage to you. And so, but you know, kids in the favelas, and my sons would, you know, fly kites with them. We'd play ball, we'd play soccer, and all kinds of stuff. So Bianca was like, liked to hang around. She'd come to English class, like I said. Well, Bianca was one of these uh, little girls that would wear the little half shirt, you know, and the uh, uh, booty shorts, right? You guys don't know about that in Silver City, huh? <laughs> and so, uh, you know, it's in Brazil, right? This is where it all probably started anyway, right? And so, uh, uh, so one day, we're, like I said, we're at the, at the bleachers, and, and my son's playing soccer, and I'm with a couple other guys, and She's next to me, and she says, bye. And she goes, oh, no, 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 pasto, pasto. Bye in Portuguese is like saying dad. Well, it is, it is the translation dad in English or, you know, Spanish, you know, papa or pa, right? And she was calling me dad, and she caught herself. You know why? Because subconsciously in her mind, she's seen me as a father figure. Because Bianca's story was one of those, like maybe some of yours or yours was, where she would stay with mom during the week and then go with dad during the weekend. Grandma in the house. Mom, you know, alcoholic. Again, right? Like my mom partying and doing her thing, but in the house, but kind of not in the house. I mean, you know you could be in the house, but not in the house. Hopefully you're in the house tonight, but you're here. Amen? Amen. <laughs> but this was who she was, and this is who she was becoming. And I remember I would throw everything but the kitchen sink at my altar calls for these young people they, to get saved and, and to repent and to come down to the altar. And it was like she was waiting for something out there to sweep her off her feet like somebody come and rescue me and there's a man out there that's going to fulfill that void in my heart. How many know until Jesus sets a person free that cycle continues from one rejection to another rejection? This time is going to be different. Right? Can somebody say the woman at the well? This time is going to be different, Pastor. I've seen him cry. I've seen him cry. <laughs> you, can, you, you can watch a novella and cry. Right? You can get drunk and cry. I love you, man. Oh, no, you don't. Get off me. Right? <laughs> Huh? Is that too real tonight? I know he 
he's going to change this time. I've seen him cry. I've seen, I seen him cry. Huh? It's going to be different. How many know we have to be careful, even as we get saved, not to allow our past dysfunction to become our children's dysfunction? Even though we come to Jesus, we start a new life. There are a lot of things that we need help with when it comes to our homes, don't we? How many times will say, I'm still learning? Huh? I'm still learning. I've been saved for 27 years straight now. Because <laughs> I was saved before when I was a kid, but I'm still learning. So you can get saved and bring us into your home with your spouse, your children. You can still feel rejected and indirectly affect your spouse and your children. This could be just the way you were raised or weren't raised. It, it can be an event that had happened to you in the past that keeps rehearsing itself in your mind when somebody hurts you. This ain't in my notes, but I'll, I'll share it with you all tonight. I remember when I was in church, and I, I, I was I was a young man in my 20s, and I, I knocked on Pastor uh, Warner's door, and he was actually outside of his office, and he saw me, and he says, can I help you? And he said it in a way that was like, man, Why'd you have to say it like that, Pastor? I, I, like, I know you guys are looking at me like deer in the headlights. Like, what's wrong with that, right? Like asking, can I help you? But, but inside of me, it's like that. I still have those rejection issues. Huh? Can anyone relate to that? Oh, that's the way it is. Forget it then. So you can get caught up in your ministry, caught up in your career, caught up in your job, your hobbies, that your family becomes second, even third place in your life. And let me tell you something tonight, just because you have a Christian home doesn't mean it's not a dysfunctional home. Oh, you don't got to say amen, <laughs> but it's true. I think about my wife's family. She came out of a lot of dysfunction. My family came out, we came out of a lot of dysfunction. And so, be, so, so we're trying to work things out in, in, in our home and try to be as functional as we, we can and, and figure things out like, oh, you know what, I, I did, that was wrong. Or well, maybe one of us has to work on our anger and the other one has to work on our empathy. Hello? Yes, true. One of us got, got to work on uh, whatever it is. And, and because, see, when you come from a broken home, you don't have that structure and, 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 and you don't know how to implement that in your home. Oh, yeah, but what about all the examples in church? Yeah, but they don't live in my home. I don't live with them. How many know there's hope in Jesus today? Yes, exactly. yeah. right. See, that drive, that hunger to feel accepted and recognized can easily overtake your ministry at home. I'm still, I'm old school. I still believe that my first ministry is at home. My main concern is my wife and my two boys. I love you all. I love, I, I love my church family. I love my in-laws. I love my dad. But guess what? My first ministry is my boys and my wife. Amen. My biggest prayer Yes, I pray for my unsaved loved ones, but my biggest prayer is for my children. I want my boys to know Father God like I know Father God. 
Because, see, it's hard for church kids because church kids, most of the time, have a good father if their father's serving the Lord. Maybe not a perfect father, but a good father. So they have that covering. But see, my hope is that they would know God in a way, in a personal way. They're saved. They love, they love God. But I want more for them. I don't see the insecurities in them that I see in me, as I told you the other day. I personally have to work hard to be intentional with my family. I don't, I don't, I didn't have my father show me how to be a father. My father was a heroin addict who spent a number of years in prison before I was even born. My dad spent most of his 20s and 30s in prison. His dad hardly ever went to visit him in prison. So how can I know how to be a father? My grandfather, who was an army veteran, would often hang out at the VFW, which happened to be right around the block from my house in National City in, in, in Southern California. So I would see him drive by my house with my step-grandmother, and he wouldn't stop. Now, this was like in my junior high, going to high school days around there, maybe high school days, and I would always see him go by, and he would never stop. And in my mind, I would think, why does he not stop? Why, why, why does Grandpa Joe not stop? What's going on? Well, what happened was, is him and my dad had a beef over something stupid at the bar. See, you've got to be careful not to allow your dysfunctions to become your children and your grandchildren's dysfunction. Because who suffers? The kids. And that went on for a number of years. Until I found out what had actually happened. It was over some dumb argument. How many understand that there are examples in the Bible for our benefit? That you don't have to do the same stupid things that you read of in the Word of God. You, uh, young people that have parents that have done stupid things, you don't have to make those same mistakes. Well, we have the classic story of Cain and Abel. Very intriguing story. Cain's offering was rejected by God because his offering was offensive to God. Thus Cain felt rejected and angry. And Genesis 4, 6 says, So the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? And why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, you will, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door and is desirous for you. But, you should rule over it. How many know some feelings of rejection are brought on by our own actions? Not everything is put on us. Some things we suffer because of decisions we make. Notice that God gave Cain a chance to change, but he didn't. Isn't God merciful? You know, how many thank God for the preacher? I'm not talking about me, I'm just saying in general, the preacher. You thank God for the preacher because the preacher is a herald of God who warns you according to the word of God. People say, well, how come God ain't merciful? How come God ain't showing me no love? The mercy is in the warning. So you don't wreck yourself. Hello? The mercy is not like, oh, you're doing good. You're okay when you're wrecking your life. That's not mercy. That, that's, that, that's, that's, that's not real love, right? And God takes Cain aside and he rebukes him. But he says, if you get it right, Cain, listen. You'll be accepted. And he doesn't. And we know the rest of the story, don't we? He went out and took his brother's life. Because rejection, if not checked will become something very ugly. 
And that's the first murder that we read of in the Bible. And guess what? There was no television. There was no phone. Huh? It was, it was just himself and sin. Sin separates us from God. We cannot be right with God on our own. We have to come through Jesus who was rejected so that we could be accepted. You may have been rejected in more ways than one tonight. But there's someone who was rejected for you. Thank you, Jesus, and that's Jesus. He was rejected by his own people. He came to his own, the Bible says, and his own received him not. John 7, 5. For even his brothers did not believe in him. How about that? Here is the Son of God, the Messiah, the Savior, God in the flesh, and his brothers don't even believe in him. So when your family rejects you, when you give your life to Christ, and they don't want to hear your witness, just understand that Jesus went through it too, and he was God, and is God. All of your sins, all of your rejection was put on Jesus. He felt the pain of rejection because he took the sins of the world on himself. The Father's holy anger was put on Jesus because of us. Jesus showed his disciples nothing but love and the way to the Father. Yet when it came down to it, he was betrayed by Judas publicly denied by Peter, and his disciples ran away in fear when they felt their lives were threatened. See, tonight it could be your parents that rejected you. It could be your spouse that rejected you. It could be your kids that rejected you. It could be your friends that rejected you. How many know that the longer you live life, you can get rejected from people that you thought you would never get rejected from? No, but it's not supposed to be like that. Listen, as long as we live in this fallen world, it can be like that. There can be people on your side one day and the next day totally shine you and reject you and treat you like <laughs> like they don't even know you. But thank God we don't serve man, we serve Jesus. My salvation, amen, is not dependent on any man. My salvation is not depending on him. And let me give you some uh, advice tonight, single people that you're ready, you're, you're single, ready to mingle and looking for that spouse. <laughs> let me tell you something tonight. Don't go for someone who is more in love with you than they are with Jesus. Go for someone who loves Jesus more than they love you. Because that's the one you want to get with. Because that one, if they could be faithful to Jesus, they could be faithful to you. That wasn't in my notes. But. You can feel the weight of rejection because of your own choices that separate you from a holy God and others. Tonight. Just like Cain. You've made some dumb choices. You've made some foolish decisions. You actually cut other people off from your life because of your actions. How many know one of the greatest revelations is to say, you know what, it's my fault. It's me. I can't, I, you get, you know, you get to a point in your life. How many know tonight? Let me just add this. This ain't my notes either. But let me just say this. You don't want to be a 50-year-old still talking about how your mom and dad wasn't there. Hello? I don't want to be a 50-year-old man still talking about how my dad wasn't there for me. I don't. I'm a dad now. And what I got to concentrate on is raising my children. 
You know, my, my dad, God love him. He, he's saved right now. And he loves the Lord. And, and, and I'm so blessed because of that. Amen. You know, and he, he's on his last leg right now. He's, 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 he's on his way. He's almost, he's almost in glory. And all the suffering he's going through right now is going to be over soon. But sometimes he'll mess up and he'll call me dad. And he'll be talking to someone, and he'll say, "Yeah, you know, oh, I was talking to I was talking to Dad, you know, for me, yeah, because he sees me like I'm like the more responsible one. The, the I used to be his pastor before. Can you imagine pastoring your own dad? Especially someone rough around the edges like he was. <laughs> Believe me, we had some talks." But we have a good relationship right now, brother. My sister, who is 15 years old than me, was given up for adoption at uh, four years old by my aunt. My aunt basically rescued my, my sister from my mom. My mom had my sister out of wedlock at 18 years old. Uh, my mom was still a party girl, not ready to give all that up yet. So my aunt rescues her, adopts her. Well, I caught up with my sister. I've known my sister for years. And, and uh, I was preaching revival in uh, uh, Louisville. And that's right next to Tennessee. So she lives in Tennessee. And she drove on down with my cousin to see me. Set a service, Sunday service. And after we went and had lunch. It's like any family does, right? Caught up? Well, we did not have my mother's um, uh, celebration of life because she didn't think it was going to be a good idea because it was going to bring up memories for her. I was totally shocked. I was offended. I was upset because I'm looking forward to this, right? I didn't give my mom a proper burial. I didn't do a funeral for her. I, so I thought we'll, we'll do a celebration of life. In-house, right? Family. She called it off. And so we're, we're having lunch, and she wants to explain herself to me, tell me. And she began to tell me all the rejection that she went through from my mom at a young age. She says, one time, she goes, for example, she goes, one time, mom came to eat Thanksgiving. She comes, and she comes in with her little mini skirt. She goes, I'm 14 years old. And I'm like, hey, mom, here I am, right? Remember my aunt adopted her? She's like, hey, mom, here I am. Hello, look at me. I said, my mom totally ignored her, sat down, ate her meal, and left. And she says that basically she can't really recall, if I got the facts right, my mom saying, like, I love you. My mom's told me a million times that she loved me. I love you. Uh, I'm sorry, right? None of that. Now, they spent so much time through the years together, traveling places and doing different things. My mom went from San Diego to Tennessee to visit her and spent a lot of time. So in my mind, I'm boggled, like, why don't you want to do the uh, celebration of life? So that's what she said. That's, those are... Uh, some of the reasons. And so she came to visit my mom. My mom was dying of, of dementia in the hospital. And for her, it was like I, I left it there. And that was it. I said my goodbyes. Love you, mom. And that was it. And my only consolation that me and my older cousin, which is her stepbrother, hey, come on, you guys know the story, right? <laughs> uh, could give her is Jesus. It's Jesus. He's the answer. He's the only relief for you, sister. The only way that you're going to get this burden off of you is by giving it to Jesus. And she's like, you know, I forgive her and everything. I, I, I just want to tell you this is why. But how many know we could be holding things and we don't even know it? And the Holy Spirit will reveal it to you and show you that you need to let this rejection go so that you can fully uh, 
receive the acceptance that the Father has for you, our Heavenly Father, right? And sets you free from some things. And so tonight, my hope tonight is that if you're here and you're suffering with rejection, and again, I don't care how old, my sister is like 65, 66 years old. It don't go away. Again, you don't sweep these things under the rug. They'll go to your grave with you if you don't crucify them and bring them before the feet of Jesus. So my hope tonight is for you, if you're dealing with rejection, that you would bring it to the feet of Jesus and be healed, or at least, listen to me, because I know this is a process, get on the road to recovery. Amen. See, some things you get delivered from, other things you get healed from. And it's like a remission, right? You're getting healed. You're getting healed. God is helping you. Uh, you know, I, w I wish I could tell you tonight that I laid my sweaty palm on your sweaty forehead tonight. Those pellets are burning hot tonight, amen? And, 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 and uh, everything just go away. But the reality is this, is that it will give you a start, but then you have to continue. You have to choose to continue. So tonight... We're going to get set free from some things and believe God to set us on the right path that we can become functional in the kingdom of God. So we can help other people. That's his will tonight. With every head bowed in respect to God tonight. Tonight you're here and Jesus can sympathize with your weakness. He was rejected. He felt the rejection of the Father. And he uttered the words, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He felt something that he had never felt before in his life. We can't imagine the pain that he was going through on that cross. A lot of times we only think about our pain that we're going through. The pain that he felt of rejection. Could you imagine being in perfect harmony with your father and then one day it's all taken away. And that's what he went through on that cross. He felt it as a man. See, we, we don't believe that he just became some spirit and, and didn't feel anything. He felt it. It wasn't like this role play that he went through as an example for mankind. He felt it. He felt the weight of it. Yeah, it hurt him when his disciples wouldn't pray with him for an hour in the garden. Of course it hurt him. He was fully man, just like he was fully God. Yeah, and I'm sure it hurts him. When we backslide, we do our own thing, rebel, and we know to do good, and we don't do it, I'm sure it hurts him. But you know one thing, I want to tell you something. He's praying for you. The Bible says he makes intercession for us. Isn't that interesting? He prays for us. Goes before the Father for us. He prayed for his disciples. And when you feel like nobody else cares about me, understand this, Jesus cares about you. Jesus loves you. And sometimes that rejection that you face in your life is the very thing that will lead you to the feet of Jesus. It's the very thing that led Mary Magdalene to the feet of Jesus. The very thing that led Matthew, the tax collector, the traitor, be to Jesus. Tonight you're here and you're broken, you're hurting, you're lost. God feels your pain tonight. He understands what you're going through. And if you could picture tonight all of heaven pausing for you, Because you're that important to him. And if you're here tonight and you're broken, you're 
lost, you're not right with God. Maybe because other people put rejection on you. And maybe because you put your own rejection on you. Maybe a mix of both. You just need help. You don't know up from down tonight. It's okay. You're in the right place. Take the first step tonight. That's repentance. What is repentance? What are you talking about? Repentance means you change your mind about God tonight. He is Lord. He is salvation. He is the only way that I can be saved is through Jesus. That's repentance. I turn away from my sin and I give it to Jesus. That's you tonight. Lift up your hand. You say, that's me, Pastor. God sees your hand now. God sees your hand, young man. Anyone else? Amen. God sees your hand now. Anyone else tonight? Amen. God sees your hand. Praise God. And, and you can be a, a, a young person tonight and give your life to Jesus. My wife gave her life to Jesus when she was five years old. My dad gave his life to Jesus when he was 66. And he was a heroin addict. It's not one no more, though. So those of you that lifted your hand, first of all, let's all stand to our feet. Those of you that lifted your hand, or you didn't lift your hand, you should have lifted your hand, I want you to come on down to this altar right here. And I'm going to pray with you. And I'm going to believe God with you. Amen. Just come on down and stand right here by this line right here. Amen. I want you all just I want you just to lift your hands tonight. We lift our hands, amen. This is God. I surrender to you. Would you repeat this prayer with me tonight? Just say, Father, in the name of Jesus, forgive me of all my sins. I believe Jesus died and rose again for me. I turn away my sin and I choose you I ask you to save my soul the blood of Jesus sets me free from every form of rejection of addiction of lies in Jesus name Amen where you are right now just begin to Thank Jesus where you are. Father God, I thank you tonight. Lord God, I pray, Lord God. Let my sister see her worth, Lord God. That you love her. That you died for her. Thank you. Love Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, your grace. Set her free, Lord, from every addiction, Lord, and lie of hell. I bind every force of hell against this woman's life, every spirit of death, every curse broken in the name of Jesus. Be free in the name of Jesus tonight. Hallelujah. Lord God, I thank you tonight, Lord God. I pray, Lord God. Freedom, Lord God. Father God, in Jesus' name, break the chains, Lord God. In Jesus' name. I pray peace and the joy of the Lord, which is our strength. Break every lie of hell. Blood set you free. Oh, bandala masa, bandala masa. Father God, I thank you tonight for your love and your grace in your power. Oh, son.
those thoughts of ending it, that's not God. That's not his voice. That's the enemy's voice. And, and you, both of you, amen, and everybody here, but both of you in particular, we want you to know that he died for you so that you would have to die. There's life in Jesus. No matter how much you feel like you messed up, there's life in Jesus. Amen. So I want to pray for you both. Amen. Father God, right now, Lord God, I break this curse, Lord God, in Jesus' name. The curse, Lord God, of generations, of illegitimacy. Father God, I cast out all darkness right now, all fear, Lord God, of the future, Lord God, all wickedness, every word spoken against this young man's life and all abuse, Lord God, I break in Jesus' name. Oh, Father, I pray you for the love, Lord God, that you have for Father God, Jesus' Let him feel your love. Lord God, I pray right now, Lord God, break, Lord God, I I command the spirit of suicide to be gone right now. The blood of Jesus sets you free. You lying spirit, you foul demon right now. You have no authority. In the name of you, all confusion, I bind and I cast out. Jesus, break every chain. The blood of Jesus set you free. The blood of Jesus set you free. Thank you, Father. Lord God, thank you in the name of Jesus. Lord God, I pray, Lord God, every addiction, Lord God, every, every spirit of death, Lord God, I bind and I cast it out. Lord God, restore what the enemy has stolen, Father God. Bring him back to a place that he needs to be. Restore his relationship with his family, Lord God, with his loved ones. Give him the power, Lord God, to say, I'm sorry. Give him strength, Lord God, to be a new man in Jesus. The Bible tells us that all, anyone who's in Christ is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. But you need to receive that word. You need to receive it. You've heard it. You've probably read it. You know it. But you need to receive it as your own. Word. The word of God is powerful. Like nothing else. As you begin to read, and you begin to soak in the word of God, you're going to see yourself change. You're going to see your mind come back. You're going to see those addictions fall off. You know, yeah, they wish. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for my sister. Lord, I
because of your heart that you have. He's going to give you the power when you pray for your love. It's going to make sense. Right? It's not going to be like, well, I got my things, but I really want other people to. So, you know, it's not going to bounce off the sin. It's going to, it's going to be correct. It's going to, it's, going to, it's going to make sense. Right? The clouds are going to look. So I just want to pray with God. Father God, I pray right now for my sister. Give her, Lord, direction, Lord God, and strength. Help her to make hard decisions, Lord God, that she's struggling with tonight. It's going to save her life, Lord God, and the future, Lord, of her family. Lord God, give her strength, Lord God, to be an intercessor, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, my sister uh, Dolores. I want to just encourage you. You uh, carry a lot of hurt for other people. You're always worried. But I want to pray for you tonight that God's going to lift this burden on you. You can't live other people's lives, you, you, you've got to live your life. Right? You've got to live your life. That's where the peace is going to come. You can't drive yourself crazy because something's wrecking your life. You have to live your life. Right? That's a bondage. That's not God. That's not God. Great? It's okay, Lord. Good night. Go to sleep. Because by you worrying and being stressed, you know, falling back into addiction here and there, and you know, a little bit of this and that. You just get lost. I don't want you to be lost. You have a lot to offer. You have a lot to offer, but you need to get a hold of this. God wants to set you free. Okay? It's not that you're heartless or you don't care. It's that you got to take care of you before you take care of everybody else. Okay? So I want you to pray. If you agree with me tonight, Okay. He said, Father, the blood of Jesus sets me free from all drama that's not mine. I give it to you. I rest in you. I command the spirit of torment and burden to be lifted off of my shoulders. I give it to you, Jesus, and I choose to rest. Father God, I pray, let it be so, Lord God. Break the chains, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Loose her, Father God, and give her, Father God, a peace that surpasses all understanding. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise God, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Let's give God praise, amen, tonight. Hallelujah. Well... God is good. Yes. Amen. I didn't know he was going to do all that. <laughs> but you know what? That's what happens when we open up our hearts and we say, Lord, do what you want to do. Because I, I can't do this anymore. Right? And I'll tell you what, you guys have, you guys have a, a great future. Every one of us in here does. Amen. You know, uh, so I'm going to leave you with that because I don't want to wear you guys out. But uh, I because I really want you to come back tomorrow, you know. I don't want you to say like, man, I was messed up at work yesterday. Or, you know, I ain't coming tomorrow. That guy wore us out, you know. I don't want that to be my testimony. <laughs> so uh, I, I want to see you tomorrow if you can make it tomorrow. I'm telling you, there's something that happens. You make a choice, right, Joe? Yeah. Joe knows. When there's something that happens when you say, you know what? I, I made it that service. I'm going to make it the next one. Right? And, and you choose. That's what I want to I want to leave you with tonight before I give it over to Pastor. You, you can choose. You can make a decision. And God will back it up. And God will say, all right, yes and amen to that. I'm going to back you up and I'm going to give you the power to be here again. And I'm, going to, and I'm going to give you the power not to mess up tomorrow. And listen, the 
Let me tell you, if you mess up, don't let that keep you from coming back right. to church. Amen. 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 You might be broken, busted, disgusted, limping in here, barely making it, right? Remember the Terminator? <laughs> They're shooting him, and he's just, he's crawling, right? Sometimes that's how we are, right? We're barely crawling, but at least you made it. You landed. Make it. If you can make it, God will help us. Amen. So that's all I have tonight. God bless you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. You're welcome. Amen. 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 Amen.